the reciprocal function family. Functions that model inverse variation have the form f of x equals a divided by x, where x does not equal zero. These belong to the reciprocal function family. Transformations of these functions include stretches, compressions, reflections, and horizontal and vertical translations. We can see in this box here that the general form of a member of the reciprocal function family is y equals a divided by x minus h plus k, where x does not equal h. The inverse variation functions, y equals a over x, are stretches, shrinks, or compressions, and reflections of the parent reciprocal function, depending on the value of a. The graph of the parent reciprocal function, y equals 1 over x, is shown on the right. Now let's see how we would graph different functions from the same family. Example 1. What is the graph of y equals 12 divided by x? We will identify the x and y intercepts and the asymptotes of the graph. We will then state the domain and range. First we make a table of values. By using the x inputs of 1 half, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, we get the corresponding y values of 24, 12, 6, 4, 3, and 2. We will now use these values to create some coordinates on our graph. Once we graph these points, our graph will look like this. So far, so good. Now connect the dots. So far, the graph of y equals 12 divided by x will look like this. Now, since reciprocal functions have two branches on their graphs, we need to create the other branch. So what we need to do is take the x values and use their opposites now to create our other y values. So same deal, we're going to plug our x values into our function y equals 12 over x and generate some more coordinates. Again, plot your points, connect your curve, and you arrive at two smooth branches of your graph. Now we need to find the x and y intercepts of the graph, as well as the asymptotes of the graph. So let's take a look at our graph. You may notice that the y values get closer to zero as the absolute values of x get larger. This means we have a horizontal asymptote, or boundary line, at our x-axis. Because we have this asymptote at our x-axis, it also means that we have no x-intercept. You may also notice that the absolute value of y gets larger as x approaches zero. Now again, our branches will never actually cross our y-intercept, meaning again we have an asymptote at our y-axis. Because this asymptote exists at our y-axis, again we have no y-intercept. So just to recap, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, or our x-axis, and we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, or our y-axis. For domain and range, again, because we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, that means our domain will be all real numbers except for where x is equal to zero, so x cannot equal zero. Our range is very similar. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, so our y values never actually equal zero, so our range will be all real numbers except y equal to zero. Now let's see how different values of a affect the transformations of our reciprocal function. For each value of a, how do the graphs of y equals 1 divided by x and y equals a divided by x compare? What is the effect on the graph? So what we're going to do is we're going to take three different values of a and create the graphs and see how it compares to our parent function. The first thing we need to do is graph our parent function. Here we see the graph of the function y equals 1 divided by x, the parent of the reciprocal function family. Now let's start looking and see how some of the other a values affect this graph. Here in blue we have the graph of y equals 6 divided by x. As you can see, our parent function has stretched away from our origin to create our new graph. So just like in other function families, a values that have an absolute value greater than 1 stretch our graph. Now here in green, 
we have the graph of y equals 2 divided by x. Again, our a value has an absolute value greater than 1, so our graph is stretched from the parent function. This time, we have the graph of y equals negative 1 half divided by x. The first thing we need to take a look at is the fact that this is negative. That will cause our graph to reflect in the x-axis, creating a switch from quadrants 1 and 3 to quadrants 2 and 4. The next thing we look at is the 1 half. Now because 1 half has an absolute value less than 1, it shrinks our graph. So our values actually become closer to the origin. Now here are six questions for you to try. They need to be done exactly like the examples in this video. If you don't want to do them on a separate sheet of paper, you can also turn to page 215 in your workbook and do them there. They actually are the same six questions. Good luck, and we'll talk about them tomorrow.